I'm going to talk about the Pacific Internship Programs for Exploring Science, um, or PIPES. Uh, this is a, a suite of programs that I run. It's uh, including the Micronesian and American Samoan Student Internship Program, the UH Hawaiian Internship Program, or UH HIP, Research Experience for Undergraduates, RU, and our Research Experience for Teachers. I'm going to focus on the middle two, the UH HIP and RU, but I'm very, you know, welcome to entertain questions on the other ones as well, or talk to me afterwards. Um, the idea of the program really came from discussions between me and my late husband, Charlie Chong. Um, Charlie was a, a, a stream biologist from Hilo, as well as a high school science teacher. And when I started um, uh, working here in Hawaii, I had a job with a UHC grant working out in Micronesia. I was already doing programs out there, and as he and I started going to meetings here in Hawaii and um, interacting with people, it was, uh, uh, it hit me that there were um, few locals represented in the conservation workforce. They were def definitely there, um, but there definitely weren't in, the, in a lot of the decision-making roles. And it just seemed like um, that, not that that was uh, bad or good, but it just didn't seem quite right. Um, in talking with a lot of different people, uh, some of their, um, if you, if you looked at it, that meant that there were very few local role models within a lot of those positions, and um, therefore people weren't as encouraged to go into theirs. But there are the whole suite of issues I don't even know if we can fully identify. Um, that's not saying there weren't a lot of good people in conservation. There really are, obviously. You know, we're great in this room. Um, I think uh, some of the challenges, though, um, as any of you know who have come from um, um, outside of Hawaii, there definitely is a, a, um, a learning period there of, of adapting to um, the uh, background, the, the whole different cultural approaches here in Hawaii, et cetera. And a lot of people um, uh, don't stay very long. If your family is not here, if your roots aren't here, then you, you, um, frequently pe people move on. So again, I'm not saying there's a, a bad or good of this. It's just that there are issues here that I think we can um, help in trying to get more people involved, um, definitely from a local audience. When I started talking to people from an aging pers agency perspective, definitely people were interested. Now this is, um, keep in mind, this is 1996, so, so this is 11 years ago um, uh, when I was talking with them. So things have definitely changed. At that time, there was a lot of interest in hiring locally. Um, they, they really sensed that uh, that would be a great, effective workforce. Um, there weren't really a lot of available rec recruitment mechanisms, and a lot of agencies, um, Frankly, people are really busy doing their own job. They don't have time to go out and like, hey, do you want to apply for this job? Or, you know, or getting that out into those circles if they didn't into those pathways of trying to recruit um, more locally. So I think that uh, at the time, 10, 11 years ago, it was much different than what there is now. There are a lot of those different mechanisms existing now. Um, and there was a lack of knowledge how to connect with this audience. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a daunting task for people who have not worked in academia or worked with um, students to all of a sudden start working with students. It's like, whoa, I don't really know how to do that. So there were elements of that that I heard from people too. If you look at the youth audience, and I, I, I this is one of the slides I changed, Aaron, at one in the morning, was that um, I, I actually put in the word youth, but actually I have quite a few people that are of um, non-traditional students, so I don't know if I'd call them young. I, I have one intern this year who's just a couple years younger than me. Um, there definitely was a lot of care and concern about the Aina and the future of that, um, of those resources. Um, they're experienced and, you know, in working and playing in these same resource, uh, resource areas that we are um, trying to manage, manage here. And they're connected to local issues. Those are, uh, a lot of times, those are their ancestors and their family that we are talking about um, working with. 
Um, however, there are, again, a few local role models in conservation. And these were kind of, um, this was in talking with students and with people that um, worked with students as well. Uh, a lot of times I found that students and families weren't really aware that conservation was really a um, career choice, a potential career choice. Um, with a lot of the local families, my, my husband's family, for example, they're, they're the dental, the dentist Chongs in Hilo. Um, and if you're gonna go into science, why wouldn't you go in to be a dentist? Um, and that concept of you wanna be a what? Um, and, uh, and also students looking at, well, I love playing, I love surfing, I love fishing, but you mean what? I could maybe find something to do that would actually be relevant to them. Um, as well as, the, finally, the economic challenge of, um, of volunteering, of going out and finding those kinds of jobs. A lot of um, the families, a lot of students can't afford to not um, get paid over the summertime, and that's their one time during, if they're in college, of being able to work, but they really need to make some money, and so trying to address those issues, too. So UHIP, the UH Hawaiian Internship Program, I um, started in 97, and I had um, four groups that I um, work quite closely with. Um, USGS BRD, um, Pacific Island Ecosystems Research Center, Pierce, um, Bill Steiner was, um, uh, had started a similar effort actually in 96, so he and I started, um, uh, but he was way too busy to run it, so we started working together. The USDA Forest Service, um, Kathy Ewell, um, was uh, a great um, uh, assistant and just proponent of these kinds of efforts. Pauline Sato with the Nature Conservancy of Hawaii has been a great um, mentor and just uh, um, had, had so much history already in, these, uh, in this type of work and had ongoing programs. Um, and the Secretary for Conservation Biology, Nancy Glover, believed in this idea from the very beginning. And, um, those four people we did pretty much uh, were, formed my uh, advisory committee when we were really forming these ideas in their first few years and, and really honing them down. Um, in, I think it was 2000, um, yeah, that uh, Kamehameha Schools, uh, Peter Simmons and I drank a lot of iced tea um, to, uh, um, to talking about how we could work together and that partnership has been a, um, a really fruitful one um, for uh, both organizations as well. Um, and I'm based at the um, UH Hilo at the PACRC. So it's been, a, it's been a neat partnership over the years. There have been a lot of additional partners, um, YCC, um, the Hawaii, Conserv um, Hawaii Community College uh, Forest Team Program, different grants, people coming and saying, hey, you know what, I have money for an intern and a grant, but can we just run them through your program? So um, there uh, have been a lot of different partnerships and people and ideas and people calling me up and saying, hey, this sounds like a great idea. Um, uh, so a lot of different things, uh, just by word of mouth of people hearing of the program and, and calling me up. Um, NSF, uh, Don Price and I at UH Hilo got um, NSF funding for our research experience for undergraduates. That's a national program um, where universities can apply for research funding. Um, and uh, EPSCoR, another NSF uh, program was uh, in 2003, allowed me to kind of expand the program and the ideas. Um, and that's kind of where pipes came from. I started having too much alphabet soup of well massive and UH chip and our you know, his pipes becomes easier. Basically, um, I recruit host agencies with projects and I recruit interns um, who are interested in these areas and I mush them together. Um, it's a pretty careful mush. Um, Erica Perry is in the um, audience. Um, she's worked with me after the, over the last several years. Um, Carmen Perez Frain is also um, uh, works with me and they've become quite artists at that matching process. Um, it's 10 week paid summer internships. They, they are project based um, or planned out. Um, uh, most of them are project based where interns have a project from beginning to end or, or from maybe it's not A to Z, but it's at least D through M that they're getting an experience from of seeing a progression. Um, or in one project or several projects in some cases. They're mentored by the host agency and the program staff. It's a really comp important component um, that uh, John touched on that we really believe that that's how we really help usher these people um, uh, into their, their future interests. It's writing intensive. Um, they have to write a proposal, progress reports, final report. They would do a final presentation at the end and in most cases they get credit. Um, just, just kind of compares uh, the, the uh, UH HIP is really focused on um, Kama Aina undergraduates. I define that rather loosely. Um, they're statewide locations. There's a variety of projects. Um, they can repeat them many years. Um, we have the intern a couple years younger than me. Has uh, um, This is his sixth year. Um, that's going to the extreme, but that's okay. We'll, we love him. Um, 
uh, its funding is primarily both by host agencies. Um, I, and unlike John, I didn't do the numbers. I really need to do that as far as how much money actually goes into these programs every year from the host agencies. Um, Pierce and Kamehameha Schools provide direct um, program support as well, um, without which I couldn't run this program, these programs. Um, and we partner with Alulike and grants, et cetera, for various projects for, for agencies. A lot of times we have agencies that don't have funding for an intern, but they've got a great project. And so trying to make that work through com com combining different resources. Um, RU focuses on a broader audience, but many of our local students um, also fall within those um, areas too. But we bring students both in from the mainland as well as have students participate. And we mush this all together. Um, but that's where PIPES comes from, is UHIP and RU interns are pretty much and they know maybe who they are, but they're all working together. They're only in East Hawaii. It's research-based, and it's uh, funded through NSF. So what's our impact? Um, we've had 133 interns, I think. Um, I, if some of them, when they start repeating a lot of times, I sometimes uh, not quite sure on that number over the last 11 years. Um, uh, in 80, 180 projects with over 30 agencies, it's uh, uh, pretty fun. Um, a few years ago, I think it was like five years ago, that uh, at this conference where um, uh, Nancy Glover a year, six years ago, um, Nancy had people stand up like where our, our current interns, our former interns, and all the agencies who had worked with interns was quite a sizable number of the in the room. Um, and uh, so we've definitely worked with a lot of different people. About 60% of the past HIP interns uh, are working in the environmental workforce. That number's actually gone down a little bit. It used to be about at 70%, but we're now starting to recruit into the community colleges, so they're taking longer to graduate to, to get into those um, different um, kind of going on past their bachelors. And a lot of them are in graduate school. Several have gotten graduate degrees. Many are in graduate school, and but also holding down jobs at the same time. RU is similar. We've had um, uh, about 10 interns a year. Um, that program is focused on getting a lot of um, students, in, uh, targeting students who are interested in going on degrees. That's NSF's interest. Um, working with a lot of different um, projects as well and, and uh, doing presentations and starting to work on publications. I just wanted to, um, there are a lot of people that um, I could have uh, highlighted a, a lot of different ones that are also in this audience as well, but I just chose a few. Um, just to give examples, Noelani Punivai started with Napu and Noyao um, a long time ago when she was in middle school um, and uh, uh, did an internship, really started going through a lot of different uh, research experiences um, and internships, connecting with a lot of uh, different groups. and. Now is working on her PhD at um, the NREM program at Manoa, as well as working with um, Annie Gibson with the um, Hawaii Biodiversity and Mapping Program, and working with me, Annie and, and Noe and I, and um, a few others are working on different grants to get more students into the geophysics area, um, or, or, yeah, the geological sciences, excuse me. Um, so it's pretty fun to start working with somebody um, who I met so long ago. Um, Namaka Whitehead um, was an intern for a couple years, got a variety of experience. And I, I want to make a caveat. I, I'm no, no, by no way responsible for the success of these people. They, it's just has been fun to see how their experiences with our programs has um, uh, added into their experiences as well. Um, and uh, Namaka now works with Kamehameha Schools um, and working on her PhD, right, Neil? Yeah, okay. Um, she's a pretty busy lady. Um, Francis Quidicel is always kind of my poster child of success. Um, when I met Francis uh, in 97, he had no clue as to what he was doing getting that UH Hilo College of Ag degree. Really just wasn't quite sure what he was going to do with that, I, that degree. Um, we were able to get him to, into uh, working with the Forest Service was Den with Dennis O'Dowd, uh, working on invasive weeds. Um, we, we, he was one of the few that Katie Friday and I helped send over to um, um, a program with UC Davis that is recruiting different people um, into forestry. He worked in Idaho, of all places. You know, he had never been to the mainland before, um, and I sent him to Idaho. Um, um, and uh, he graduated in 98. Well, during that Idaho trip, he had a chance to work on, on train as a firefighter and then went back after he graduated for two seasons of El Dorado Hot Shots, so kind of the elite fire crews that are over on the mainland. Um, and uh, came back, worked on a variety of things, participated in the Nature Conservancy's Resource Management Assistant Training Program for two years, gained some really good experience, and it is now with them over on Maui. Um, Kayana Bishaw is my old man, uh, sixth internship this year, um, but uh, 
Um, Molokai, born and raised, a non-traditional student when he came, when I met him, uh, getting a community college degree, actually two associate's degrees, I'm not quite sure what we'll do with two associate's degrees, but um, um, had real no interest in going on, and now he's going to graduate with his bachelor's, and is interested in, gra in graduate school from what he sometimes tells me, um, and is working with Bill Garnett down in Kalaupapa right now on his home island of Molokai. So what did we learn? Um, I think some of the uh, the challenges that we're going to that we have been running into. I, I've been capping UH here, not capping deliberately, but I have more um, internships, paid internships available than w qualified interns right now, and that's been the case for about two or three years. Some of it is that UH HIP, we don't provide housing, um, and you have to you're you're getting internships on your home island or where you have an auntie or uncle that you can live with, um, etc. And um, uh, we, my pool is did my recruit my. Um, Applicant pool has kind of capped at between 25 and 30. It's not getting a whole lot bigger. There are a lot of programs, for example, for targeting Native Hawaiians, and I think that um, what I see is that pool getting spread thinner, not getting getting bigger. And I think there are a lot of programs, though, as John, and John and I mentioned at the K through 12 area that are coming up. So I'm seeing more people come in, but I think we need to be aware of, of recruitment, both both um, how. Well, not that we're only talking to these people, but we're also providing an easy track for them. Like John said, you know that, you know, now I'm interested in this, and now I could go on to this, etc. We need to be make that pathway more clear. Um, other groups in Hawaii are not underrepresented nationally. A lot of people, when they're going for, um, they're they're really great on this idea, and then they look at, um, they start looking for funding, for, like at a national level, at a lot of federal agencies. Um, Asians are not underrepresented at a national level, but here in Hawaii. Um, uh, we are really trying to include our community in with a lot of these efforts. And so we've, as a result, our selection criteria, Carmen perez Frain is kind of my master of selection criteria, and um, of really trying to identify multiple criteria that we're looking at when we're evaluating applicants to see how they best fit in with the different internships. Um, and there are many different ways needed to recruit interns. It's just funny. People ask me, and I'm like, oh, you know, they, it's almost too numerous to, to, um, to list. I have email lists. I have people that I always send like a fax copy of this to to send out. I have school teachers, I have alumni associations, I have Pacific um, and Hawaii um, club groups that I send stuff out to on the mainland. It's, it's quite extensive as to where I um, recruit. Um, connecting to place and culture, uh, it's really important, I think, as we as a conservation community um, relay to the, our next generation our passion about what we're doing and how that relates to our ethics and our values. Um, I, I, if you, you can't take that out of what we do, and we expect them to be um, focusing on how this connects and evaluating these positions as how it connects to their values. And here in Hawaii, of uh, connecting um, both to culture and place through providing that information, providing that linkage of um, culture and community knowledge and how that bridges with science is an important component of my programs. Um, mentoring and program administration. Um, it, Mentoring is the key. I mean, if uh, just giving a person a job for a summer is not the, the element of these programs. It's not the way to, to culture our whole um, uh, future generation here. Um, and it requires a lot of um, staff time. It's just time expensive. And um, I have to hand it to Forest Service. They're always kind of my guys that I hold up that over the, the 11 years that they've hosted interns, they are just, they are very good at evaluating what's gonna work best, um, putting a lot of thought into that, and Katie Friday's been great at, at um, um, ushering that process. What's gonna work best, um, uh, both in like, how do we pair interns and team them up, et cetera, um, as well as then the um, uh, Jack Ewell and now Boone Kaufman of providing, um, of, of just recognizing, you know what, it's gonna take you longer with that project because you're hosting an intern and that's fine. Um, well, it might not be fine. It might they might eat, eat it out of their hide, but they, it's recognized, and, and several of them have um, uh, won awards at a national level for their, their mentoring efforts. Um, but staff time takes the money to support that time, um, and uh, Forest Service has been great. Um, additionally, program coordination, John, me, um, Polly, and other people. Um, it's, uh, we, we help interns really um, uh, address what are those bigger issues? Why, why are they wanting to be um, involved? Is this job really something you want to do? Um, those bigger questions and, and mentoring them into the next step is an important role too. And again, that takes, um, takes time, which translates into the money. Um, teams, linkages, partnerships, we definitely um, 
have it's been fun to learn this stuff. Um, every year I, I see new things that are, are um, that work with and how people work together. Teams of interns working with teams of researchers. It might be two interns working with one researcher, two researchers working with one intern. There's a lot of different combinations that people have tried out and have. Um, uh, it's, it's really fun to see those um, uh, communities grow. Um, interns and internships kind of facilitating, facilitating that university agency um, networking. It's, it's, boy, some of these interns have had some great um, success at saying, okay, here's your, um, uh, I have this professor over here with this interest and I have, um, I'm working with this agency and actually bringing them together. Um, it's, uh, it's a pretty powerful role for those interns. Um, and just projects in general, bringing them together. Um, and partnerships between programs, um, th those are key. Uh, John and I have worked a lot um, and uh, together and just all of those different things that are really important. Next steps, where are we going real quickly? Um, it's just some, these are some of the ideas uh, that I have. Hopefully we can generate some discussion, but I think that's, it, it's important to continue that coordination and that we uh, make this a seamless um, thing for, you know, for students who are interested whether they be five or 25, that they come in and say, hey, I'm interested in this, and this is a different, that I could do this, or I could do that, or I, the whole um, pipeline of ideas. Um, and therefore, we need to make it easy for students to access that information. And each of us have a responsibility in doing that and in encouraging them to explore that. Um, I think apprentice programs such as the Nature Conservancy, I don't know whether that's a good title to, or term to use, but um, of, of giving um, the Nature Conservancy, I'm sure Pauline will talk more about it, is of having um, a group of people um, uh, get a couple years of training and therefore experience, which translates to being more competitive for jobs um, and really gain solid experience here in Hawaii are, are, are a great investment of, of agency time. Um, recruit locally and consider locally relevant criteria. I work with RCUH um, a lot of defining a lot of positions and there are a lot of mechanisms within there that you can, um, I, I'm not saying only hire local or only hire those with Hawaii experience, but what I'm saying is at least get them the opportunity to get an interview. I think a lot of times where I've um, had, um, we've worked with positions where we put something of saying, have um, you know at least a year experience working with Hawaii Biota, um, that at least gets them into the interview stage where at least they can be considered for some of these jobs. A lot of times, are, um, like one of my interns, they graduate, uh, they have an internship under their belt, but they're not quite competitive for some of these positions, and so they don't even get an interview. Um, so I think just how do we, how we, how we recruit and how we define our positions can also be looked at. Um, I think lastly, uh, of agencies and, and groups providing support for local undergraduates to um, to gain advanced degrees. Um, I think that's, uh, though for those interested in working further and, and going into more decision-making roles, of looking at models that that can do. There are, there are already um, some models, I mean, people are already doing this, but of that idea of them working part-time on your project and helping them um, support them into uh, higher degrees. Um, these are just some basic ideas, and uh, I don't want to go any more over time than I already have. Um, but uh, again, I, we're, we're really trying to generate uh, information and gen generate questions, I think, and discussion with all of these. Thank you. Oh, who can the Ohi away? Oh, Hakala la ke kia manu i ka ohu i ka ohi aha mau me ho aha mau i dale o kale hua pane apane mai pahai ke ia mamu e.